morning guys hope everybody's staying safe practical and keeping themselves out of harm's way um saturday the 2nd of may 2020 uh so i'm just having a cup of coffee in the shed here now guys i've uh, i've already been been and fed the uh, pigeons and the chickens fed and watered those that's that job out of the way um just a little bit of an update um midweek I called the Morrisons and I bought a few plants. Um, not many, but I did buy a few plants. Um, purely and simply because I can't be bothered now. It's getting really late and waiting for these uh, seeds that I've planted to germinate. If they germinate, they germinate, they're great. It's going to be a learning curve more than anything because one thing I can tell you is I've had a bit of a disaster again and it's all down to my own fault. Basically what it is, the seedlings I planted last week, I've killed most of them. <laughs> And uh, not intentionally, but I have killed them. Basically, I've been overwatering, guys. Um, with the warm weather and all the rest of it, I kept thinking, oh, give them a bit more water, let them soak, give them a bit more water, let them soak, give them a bit more water. And I've actually gone in the opposite direction now, and I have killed the plants off, 90% of them anyways. So um, I've got about 10 red letters survived, six of the um, little gem letters that they've survived. Um, only about four or five of the mustard plants have survived and only four or five of the um, spicy leaves. And now they were doing really well. I plotted them on and I've basically drowned them out. Uh, they were a bit too small for the amount of water that I was pouring in there. But I was thinking if I don't get back up midweek and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, lesson learned, overwatered, killed them off. The other seeds that are planted, um, obviously it has only been a week for some of them and there's no sign of any of those. I'm starting to get a bit impatient now. So I went to Morrison's and I bought a few plants. I've got a couple of butternut, uh, two courgette plants, some runner beans. I know I've got some implanted, but there's no sign of them. Uh, so established runner beans, uh, a tray of, a tray of turnips, because I killed the white, little white globe turnips, even though I've transplanted some more. Um, and two beefsteak tomatoes as well. I know, I know I've got plenty of tomato plants in, but um, I, I've seen the videos of the beefsteak tomatoes and they look really, really good. So I've decided I'll put two plants in just to see how they do. Um, so yeah, okay, so all those that I bought, with the exception of the turnips, which were underwatered, or rather, because of the size of the plants, they required more water. They're soaking in water again now and they're recovering okay. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, this is all a lot of trial and error, this guys, and... Um, each weekend brings its trials and tribulations, uh, tribulations, some positives, some negatives. Another positive, uh, the strawberries that I put outside and I put it on, all of those have now got some new foliage, so they're surviving, guys. Um, that's, a good, that's a good thing. I'm a little bit annoyed I've killed most of my mustard plants and most of my spicy leaves because those are the ones I was really looking forward to. However, it is what it is, and uh, I've done what I've done, so... I'm not going to bother planting anymore. Um, I also got some uh, chili peppers off my uh, father-in-law as well. And I've put a couple of those into, straight into the bed. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that, uh, you know, I said I was going to back off on the water and on the bed, and I have. I've kept to that, but been monitoring it closely uh, midweek. So, not last weekend, but the weekend before was the last time that bed ended in water. Apart from when I give a little splash around the lettuces when I transplanted those, but the bed itself didn't get any water and the rest of the plants didn't get any water. And what I can tell you is that all the plants in that bed are looking a million dollars. So that's another positive. Um, and it, and, it, and it, I'm learning all the time, because I say I've never grew in the, the no-dig system before. But it looks like I'm only going to need to water, give that bed a good water, and maybe once every three or four weeks, and maybe not even that. We'll just see how it goes and we'll monitor it. But one thing's for sure, I ain't going to water again until I see the plants start to wilt when I know the crane for water then. Um, so we'll just see what period of time that uh, actually is between uh, when I last watered and when the plants start to look um, like they need a drink. But I'm not going to water them until they do show me those signs uh, with a bit of leaf droop. So, uh, yeah, we'll just uh, watch this space, guys. We'll see how long we get between watering zone and the uh, no-dig uh, no dig system. Now, obviously, as the plants get bigger, they will require more water and the, and the frequency will become a bit uh, more often. However, 
it's still going to be nowhere near what I used to do when I was growing them in pots and I was watering them every other day. Um, and standing there with two or three watering cans a day. Man. Uh, so this does look like it's going to be a good system. And a lot of these plants that I'm now uh, struggling with, I'm going to get them in the ground today to try and salvage what I have got left, uh, basically. So that's what I'm. That's my intention today, guys. I'm going to get that done. So um, I'm going to finish my cup of coffee and I'll give you a quick tour around when I get sorted. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, guys. So <clears throat> here we are in the uh, polytunnel. And uh, look at the butternut squash. And this was the smaller of the two plants, by the way. Uh, you can see these are looking a million times better than they were. Um, I still have the window out of the top, but midweek it was blown a gale. And I put the pane back in the bottom of the polytunnel, which I've just left. But the temperature's not that bad in here today. So, uh, yeah. This is the other but butternut squash. And as you can see, it's looking absolutely beautiful now. Finally got the uh, watering right on these beds, which is none. Um, tomato plants. Uh, big mama. I've actually put a, a string around this now for to uh, start and support it. Cucumbers. Look at the difference, guys. Amazing difference in just a, uh, just a week. All the tomatoes are now looking really, really good. And the peppers, also loving it in here. Again, the tomatoes. Little lettuces that I planted last week into the bed. Look at the growth on those. I think two did die, but they were only little tiny ones. We'll just fill those holes up with the ones that uh, didn't make it. One here has actually now got established, but um, it struggled initially. But it is now getting, uh, it is now established and it's grown. And I'm just leaving that to, I'm going to leave that one in, guys. Another little one here. This is the ones uh, that were only tiny, but it's got established and it's going now. So we'll leave it. And then we have another little one there, guys. You can probably see on this one here, we're starting to get a truss on there now with some flour. And we've got another one of the peppers in the far corner there. That one's struggling a little bit, but it's well established. That's the one that got burned. If you remember last week, got the leaves burned, but it's 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 established and it's greened up now and it's really going going for it now. Um, another little cucumber, really really going for it now. Another one of the peppers looking really healthy. So great stuff. Uh, little spring onions, as you can see, doing really well now these. And again, they've had no water. The little cucumber I popped in last week. Look at the difference. It's got a nice new green uh, leaf on there. Again, no water. Some peppers. I put those three peppers that was in the pot still. I finally got those put in the bed. I can't remember whether I videoed that and showed you that or not, guys. But I put those three in a, uh, in, in, in a triangular shape here. And these two next to it are the chilli peppers that I got from my father-in-law. Now, I don't particularly like chilies, but uh, the wife does and the son uh, and, and the stepson. So, yeah. Uh, a couple of chilies in there now. Those other cucumbers that I potted on into biggest pots, the last two. Uh, again, you'd seen they were all yellowed and burned. You see the new growth coming on those now. We've backed off on the water with those as well. But here's the disaster, guys. Here's a full tray of everything gone tell a lie i think there's two red lettuce have survived and that's it but in this tray here guys everything is just dried out uh actually there's one two three four i think there's five of the uh, dark basil survived everything else has dead has died in that tray i had overwatered them 
I know, I know it looks dry on the top, but they're not, they're absolutely saturated. Way too far gone. Conversely, in the next tray, the six little gems are thriving. As you can see. And then I have got 10 of the red lattices. All looking nice and healthy. We obviously didn't water that tray as much as the other one. Up here, I have the uh, runner beans that I purchased uh, from uh, Morrison's. They're going in the ground today, guys. Looking really healthy and very, very well. So these are the other icebergs. They've all survived. Um, I didn't overwater those ones and because they were slightly bigger, they've obviously absorbed the water quicker and they've survived. The all year cauliflowers that are planted, no sign of them yet. So likewise with the dwarf beans, uh, the French runner beans, purple sprouted broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Nothing in there yet. They might come through, I don't know guys. And then down in the next tray, you'll see I've only got a handful of plants that survived out of this. And these are my uh, mustard plants. So there's five down there. One at the back. Six, maybe seven. Seven, seven of the mustard plants have, have pulled through. One, two, three, five. Five. Five that will make it out of there. Possibly six. I don't know, guys. Um, and then moving on down here, these are the um, beefsteak tomatoes, just the two plants that I bought. And then we've got the two um, courgette plants, and then a couple more um, chilli plants of the father-in-law, along with another three pepper plants here. To be honest with you guys, I've now got more pepper plants than I can care to mention, and I don't even like peppers or chilies. However, other people do, so we'll still let them grow. But I've uh, from I've gone from uh, not being able to grow anything, any of them at all, to have more plants uh, free than I can care to mention. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick tour in here, guys. I'll give you a quick look outside at the strawberries that are transplanted. Oh, by the way, that's the turnips. They've all picked back up again since I put them in water, but they're well on these. They're going in the uh, bed today. And the other strawberry plants still surviving in that little pot, been uh, keeping their own, thankfully. We'll get them in pots today as well. So, uh, moving around to the strawberries that we planted uh, <coughs> the weekend, <laughs> weekend before last. And as you can probably see here now, guys, we have got some new growth. And this one here was the worst of them all. This is the one I didn't think that was going to make it. But every one of these have now got new growth on. And all making a comeback, including that one. So, yeah, that's just a little bit of an update, guys. So, uh, we'll crack on. We'll get some of these plants planted. And we'll catch you later, guys. Bye. Okay, guys, so I'm over in the growing area now. Um, uh, by the way, I'm on my new camera, uh, my new phone today, by the way. I'm not sure whether video or footage is coming out any better or not, but it certainly looks better quality on the screen. Now, of course, that wasn't the main reason why I bought this camera, uh, bought this phone. Um, it was because the other phone was giving me a lot of problems, as you know. Um, so, so far, so good. We'll see what the uh, footage and audio turns out like on this particular one. So, uh, hey, we'll have a quick look here. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see this because I can hardly see the screen. Uh, but basically, I'm not sure how you, whether you can see this or not with the reflection of the... Uh... But what I can tell you guys is that uh, the carrots have all took a hold. Trying to shield the light uh, with my body, basically. And as you can see, the carrots have all got a hold now, guys. Even the little prims have picked up a bit. So that's that bed there. Uh, a couple of the sapo mirrors that's popped up in this bed. The other two still showing no sign yet. 
but again, the prims are looking decidedly better since we had a bit of rain. The onions all still looking well. All of the prims have now perked up a little touch. And they've got some new foliage even. They've even got a bit of new uh, growth on them. Yeah, they've, they've all hanging on and clinging, clinging to life. Uh, looks like we're getting no garlic this year, guys. Um, I'm not sure what happened. But basically, I only still have those four, and they haven't even moved um, from the last time I showed you them. They're just not growing for some reason. Not sure why. Now the weather's all warmed up and picked up, they should have at least those four should at least be growing, but they're not. Little prims in these beds here. Again, you can see some new foliage coming on there now. They are still clinging to life. One or two of them. Yeah, there is actually new foliage in that, believe it or not. And these are the gooseberries. We are getting some uh, gooseberries on here, guys. It's a bit difficult for me to actually capture this on camera because of the light. It's really, really bright today. I uh, can't see much by way of uh, flowering or fruiting on that blackberry there. I decided to capture some of them. There are little gooseberries on, on, on these uh, gooseberry plants, guys, but I can't. I, I, I'm struggling today for to find it. But this uh, black currant here, as you can see, is full of flower. Absolutely laden with it. All over. So, yeah. That'll be uh, starting to fruit shortly, guys. Um. Little uh, apple trees and the pear tree. Loads of foliage on these now, guys. And I've even got flower on the smallest tree of them all. This was, uh, like I said, a little dwarf uh, apple tree. And you can see we've got flower on this one. Quite a, quite a number of flowers on it as well. So yeah, um, potatoes, all doing really well. All coming along fine now in the potato bed. The prims in the other bed, uh, as I said, they're all still clinging to life, but that's about it, guys. And we've got the rhubarb over there. It seems to be doing quite well. And then we've got the rhubarb in the corner here, which is doing really well. And uh, the plum tree that we severely uh, cut back last year. Loads and loads of foliage on this now. So yeah. Um, uh, one or two of the potatoes are starting to pop up in here now. This is the main crop, the Sarpo Mirrors. Starting to pop up now. Here and there and everywhere. Some some further on than others. But they can grow slowly, I'm not too fussed about that guys. Yeah, so that's just a quick get, uh, update over here as well guys. But the carrots have all got established. The cabbages are looking fine even if you can't see it on the video. Catch you later guys, bye. Okay guys, so I've just put a bit of framing up now for the uh, for the peas. 
and the uh, runner beans. Not quite sure how well you can see this, but uh, so we've put one this end here for the peas when they arrive. As I say, I'd ordered some peas already established. Mine didn't take a germinate or anything, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, and we've got another one at this end, and this is where I'm going to put the beans. Now, the reason they're at either end of the bed, basically, is so that the uh, one batch doesn't shield the sun from the other ones as the sun comes round. Um, that's the idea. So I didn't want to have them uh, sort of uh, right next to each other like that because one batch would shield the sun off the others. So uh, just going to go and get the uh, runner beans and get them in, guys. Catch you later. Bye. Okay, guys. So just a quick one before I go over there and actually plant those beans out. Um, I came over. Uh, it's absolutely stifling out there again today. So uh, I've came over and um, I was rather hungry. But sensibly today, I, uh, as you know, I normally don't have anything at all to eat while I'm up at the allotment. But today, I did bring myself some sandwiches uh, and, and a couple of bags of crisps. And I've, I've just had those now and I've thoroughly enjoyed them. And I'm just having a cup of coffee now. So as soon as I've finished that, I'll get out there and we'll get the beans planted in, uh, in into that bed over there. And we'll get the turnips in. Maybe put a few more of the lettuce uh, outside now into the beds as well. Uh, and then we'll get uh, a fleece through over them, not to keep them warm, but to protect them from uh, slugs, butterflies, etc, etc, etc. That'll be the main reason. So I'm just going to have this cup of coffee, guys. Pot her on, and then uh, I'll come back to you when I've got something else done. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Okay, guys, so I'm back in the uh, shed again now having a cup of coffee. I'm, I'm absolutely melting. Um, so I have actually, <laughs> I did go out and I have transplanted some plants. So I took the turnips over there and it turned out that there was, um, I think it was 12 cells in that tray uh, entirely. And there was three, four and five plants in each of those little cells. So I've thinned them out um, into singular plants and I've planted 20. Now, I was looking at the tree and I thought, well, I've got way, I've got way too many here. I don't need this many. So I even put a couple in a clump uh, of two or three um, to do like the Charles Dowding uh, method where he grows them in uh, multiples and pulls them as they get bigger. So I put a couple in like that and then I singled out the other ones and transplanted those. I've got the runner beans in as well. Um, and I put four of the red lettuce in over the bed and then decided when I, when I was actually taking them out of the cells they hadn't actually got the roots down really deep enough in those cells so I'll give the other ones a little bit of a drink and I'm leaving them a little longer to, to get established uh, there's six left I think in the in the tray so I've just soaked all of my seed trays in water again um, because they were really, really drying out on the top and they were about halfway down, they were dry. So, And, and because they were only tiny seedlings, they hadn't actually quite got down far enough and they weren't down as far as I thought. So far from overwatering the plants, I might have actually still underwatered them and they've probably dried out on me. Uh, but some of them have obviously got the roots down deeper than others quicker. So I really don't know what's going on this year, guys. I've never had a year like it. Normally you throw seeds in, throw them a bit of water on, put the propagate the lid on and boom, they grow I really, really do not know what's going on this year with me anyways. I don't know if anybody else is experiencing the problems that I'm having this year, but uh, it seems like I'm having to fight. To, uh, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? And then when I look back on the years that I've grew successfully, I think, hang on a minute, you know, I do what I do every year, but I'm just not getting the same success. It's a bad batch of sea, bad compost. It might be a touch of over water and underwater. I don't know, but um, maybe because I'm clutching at straws now because things aren't going according to plan so I'm thinking it's me and maybe it's not after all anyways so I've got some uh, I've, I've got 20 of the turnips planted um, and a couple of those are in clumps and then I've got the runner beans in now whilst I was doing that and I thought well I've got way too many here I got a phone call off my son Tony who you'll have seen in some of the other videos and uh, He's decided uh, through boredom. I mean, he's, he's fortunate that he still has a job when he uh, he goes to the farm. He got his job back at the farm, as I mentioned in another uh, video. Um, and he and he loves being in the outdoors, so he, he got his job to keep him occupied. 
but at the weekends he's at a bit of a loss so he, he's decided to go back to his allotment and uh, make a start even later than me so um, he's thrown his potatoes in today now I did tell him it was a bit late but you've got to sort of end of, end of May you get the early crops in you, you, uh, or even the late crop in you might be okay still and you still get a crop of potatoes but he says I can't get any plants anywhere I said, well, you didn't look, because I've got some surplus. Although I've lost quite a lot, I've got, I've got more than I need, really, to be honest with you. And some things that haven't worked out, just, I've got fewer of. It's just the way it is. So um, I do have three or four little plum tomatoes that have survived, uh, although they're still only about this big. You can have those, because all the other ones are in the beds. Um, but you can have those. Um, I've still got plenty of the iceberg lettuce, so you can have a good half of those. Um... The turnips, as I said, there was three, four, five in a cell, so I've left in four cells with I mean, maybe 20 plants. Um, you can have those. And um, I'm sure there'll be other things. Oh, yeah, so you can have, there's two chilli plants still there. There's three pepper plants still there. Um, there's a couple of cucumbers in, in the pots you can have. Uh, so the, the, there's quite a, a bit of stuff that I can actually give him. Um, as late as it is, because at least they're partial grown now, so you can just get them in and get them on. He's got greener fingers than I have as well, by the way, so he, uh, he'll probably make it, but they'll probably go on to a good home. <laughs> He'll get looked after where he's uh, where, he, where they're going. So um, he's going to come through tomorrow uh, and collect those uh, those plants. So he, he's going to come through in his car. He's about three miles away. He's going to pop through in his car, come to the allotment gate, leave the plants at the gate, uh, and keep yourself about 10 to 15 feet away. And we'll just have a conversation at that point. He can take his plants and get his cellar away to the allotment and get them planted. So they're going to go to home. They're not going to go to waste. And like I said, they'll, uh, they'll probably do, do fair far better with him than they will with me. So, uh, yeah, that's a good thing, guys. Um, so I'm just finishing this cup of coffee, cooling down a little bit, and then I'll give you a look over in the uh, beds with what I've done. I'll catch you later, guys. Bye. Okay, guys, so I don't actually know where the heck today has went. Um, I seem like I've never stopped all day, but yet I don't appear to have got a great deal done. So I've got those two frames up in that bed. I've got the uh, beans transplanted. I've got the turnips transplanted. I've also now put two rows of radish in, in the same bed over there. I've got the two courgettes planted. Um, and re soaked the uh, little... Um, transplants that I, I feel like I've lost and I give them a good soak and just left them soaking in water bottom water in them uh, in the, from the tray and um, I, I'm not sure whether anything's going to come back or not but you know I've given them a good soak and I've put the lids back on as well to try and keep the moisture in there and I've put them in a bit of shade under the uh, shelving of the uh, of the bottom bench just see if that helps so I started sorting through a few plants uh, for my son for tomorrow as well, putting them all, grouping them all in one area, and then we'll just put them in a cardboard box uh, in a tray, and then he can take those when he comes for them tomorrow. Um, so yeah, it's now, um, it's ten past five in the evening, and I've been up here all day, and as I said, that's all I seem to, that's all I've got, but I don't seem to have stopped, and uh, I really just don't know where today has gone. The time's just flew past. Uh, maybe it's as a result of being trapped around four walls all week and uh, so when you do get a little bit of uh, fresh air and one thing or another the time just flies by and you, you just think wow where's the time gone um, but it feels like I've got very little done but I suppose yeah it's another good job job because I've got them out um, as as I say um, they're in the bed now they're living to their own devices and see how they come on um, yeah, so all we can do is monitor them, have a check on them tomorrow. I've put a bit of tin uh, tin sheeting across that bed on one side as well, just to stop the sun beating down after I'd watered the turnips and uh, and the beans in, uh, and the courgettes, just to stop the sun drying the surface off right away as soon as uh, I've watered them, just to give them a chance to try and put the roots down anyways. So we'll see how that works out, guys. Um, so I'm just going to have this cup of coffee and um, and then that's pretty much me. I'm going to get myself away down home. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I'll get done tomorrow, if anything, but at least I, 
I still didn't get the strawberries repotted, but I will do that first thing in the morning. Um, and then that will be them out of the way. Then that's pretty much me finished with transplanting for now. Um, and I'm just going to leave everything and see how it goes. Uh, so tomorrow I'll probably concentrate on doing something else a bit more productive. I really don't know what I'm going to do yet, but uh, well, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll just see what tomorrow brings, guys. So um, a bit of a, an iffy video today again, but um, yeah. If you're still enjoying them, then please do follow along. If you are subscribed to my channel and you'd like to subscribe, then please hit the subscribe button followed by the bell icon on the right. Um, and that will alert you to every time I put up a, a new video. Uh, hope everybody else is staying safe, uh, keeping well and out of harm's way, as I say. And uh, comments are appreciated, good or bad. Just uh, put them in the bottom below, as long as they're not too bad, guys. Um, but, yeah, and if you have any suggestions, ideas, things you think I might be doing wrong, things you think I could do to improve things, then please do comment and let me know. So until the next video, guys, it's bye for now. Take care. Bye.